Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today we've got a new toy to play with. Wow. That's right, we've got the Fluval FX2, the latest in the Fluval series of FX filters. The smallest of the FX filters. So, let's take a look at it, look at the box, look at what's inside it, what's included with it. See what features we've got to look forward to and see what we think. First, let's have a look at the box. As I said, this is the newest of the Fluval line, um, for FX filters at least, um, they're canister filters. I have been a long time user of FX filters. So if we take a look at the box first of all, we've got five stage filtration with free media, basket and basket media tray design, high capacity and low maintenance. If it's anything like the FX5 that I've used in the past, I think that is going to be true. There are some quirks with the older FX models, which hopefully will have been fixed with this one. The smart pump technology, that's the thing that sets this apart from some of the other cheaper canister filters. So we've also got five years warranty on this, three years warranty plus an extra two years if you register it. Anything that comes with extended warranties kind of free of charge. It's, it's a safety net, isn't it? It makes you think, well, if they're going to offer the warranty, then they must be confident that it won't need a warranty because any warranty calls obviously cost the company the money. And um, it talks about being quiet, energy efficient, lots of details on the box, 175 gallons or 750 liter tank size is what this is rated for. It says it does 1800 liters per hour or 475 gallons per hour. Often these figures are um, quoted with optimal conditions, so like an empty filter or zero head height and things like that. So you do have to take these things with a pinch of salt, but we'll take it on face value and see what we get out of it. This is going to be the unboxing video and a look at what's inside it. I'm going to put this on a tank, possibly my Bucktooth Tetra tank down in the fish room, uh, and do a, a longer term test of it. But we'll get it out now in this video and see what it's all about. So the first thing that you're hit with is um, instructions on the actual box in various languages. So, you know, you can educate yourself if you want to. And then we have a box here of accessories, I guess. So these are the filter strainers, the connections, and the filter itself. Not overly heavy. Output, more instructions. And I think that's it for the box. Random back piece of plastic. Keep that just in case. So your instructions here and another reminder of your free three year warranty plus free two year extended warranty. Um, I kind of tend to just throw the manuals away, but no, we'll do a proper review. Safety instructions, installation instructions, alternative configurations for setup, so that's good. Um, talking about the pump capacity, power draw, maintenance instructions, and even a place to make notes, which is quite good. I like to see that. And then exploded views helps you figure out how it's all meant to go together. And if you do need to do any troubleshooting, really useful. So the filter itself. Um, surprised how light it is. First off, as I'm talking about more and more these days, power draw, 27 watts. So a canister filter with this sort of capacity only drawing 27 watts, really good. Um, I think it's one of the most important things these days is to look at the power consumption of all the equipment that you've got in your tanks. The piping is attached to it for shipping, which is, yeah. This is your standard flu valve intake hose and uh, the ribbed hose here. Uh, the lid has, this was one of the things I didn't like about my FX5 were these were constantly breaking. Fairly easy and cheap to get replacements, but you know, when they're constantly breaking, you're like, oh, can't you just send me one that doesn't break? So hopefully these are, these are different. So hopefully upgraded, pop them off to get the lid off. So I'm immediately struck by, it's quite a short filter. In terms of canister filters, it's quite short. It's the same sort of size 
widthwise, so it's a girthy boy uh, rather than a tall boy. Uh, and the lid here is the same as many others. You've got your in, out, fairly straightforward. And then you have these valves which go on top of these. And then we have the baskets. How does it work? If you look at the lid here, we've got the in and the out clearly marked. The in is the one with the pipe on it on the inside. So that goes into the filter like so. And if you can see down at the bottom there, that connects with this little bit here, which forces the water around this outer ridge. The media baskets seal into this center area and the water is forced back up again from the bottom through the outer sponges of the media baskets. So the media baskets themselves have the coarser sponge on the outside. So it's forcing it back up here through these sponges over the top again to go back through the top down to the bottom and the bottom is where your theoretically clean water is collected and here it's where it's connected to the pump. So this is the pump on the side here. Pumps it back up through this pipe from the bottom once it's been cleaned back into your aquarium. At first glance, you get two media baskets. So this is the top one and the way that it comes set up like this. So again, your outer coarser sponge, another layer of sponge on top of this. But what you actually get is a little mini filter or a mini tray in here. So each tray is actually two trays. And then in there, they put in some ceramic rings. So you've got some mechanical filtration going through that onto your first layer of biological filtration. Again, you can put whatever you want in there, but it does come with media, which is always nice to see. And that's the bottom, so you can see how the stuff flows through. Nice wide gaps. And that's tray one. Tray two works in much the same way. Again, they've set it up with your ceramic rings on top and then the tray within the tray pops out and you have another layer of finer sponge. So this is your polishing before it goes down to the pump to be pumped back into your aquarium. Uh, and that's a neat little addition, uh, some filter bags. Yeah, we've got some nice cloth filter bags. Stretchy, put your filter media in there. Not entirely sure what ceramic media this is that it's included with, but it looks like a higher end ceramic ring. So that's how your filter bags work. You can put them through there. And then use a little bit. So this, yes. Okay, I give up. I've no idea how these are meant to work. I'm sure they're in the instructions and we can look at them later. But basically, filter bag, place that in the middle. I might not use that because that leaves a lot of space. So I might spread them out a little bit. Basically, water will flow the path of least resistance and you want it to go through the media rather than around the media. But I do really like filter bags because should you have a power cut or something like that, it's dead easy to just grab your filter bag and put it on top of an airstone or something like that in your aquarium and it keeps the the biological um, filter media active and it still does a job for you in the aquarium. But options, that's the good thing here. So we've got two big trays, two little trays, sponges of varying thicknesses. All looks good. In terms of the canister itself, I think it's something like 9.2 litres of capacity, um, of water capacity. Looks good. You will recognise this shape and this form from any other filters you've had before from Fluval. The one thing that's missing from on the FX2 compared to the FX4 and 6, I think, and 5, is a maintenance valve where you can attach a hose to drain water directly from it. Not something I used all that much, so not necessarily something I'm going to miss. Um, but it's there, it's different, or it's not there. In the accessory pack, you get your strainer, which is this bit, which goes into the aquarium. Um, you can, if you want, supercharge this and put some sponge in there to make the maintenance windows longer before you have to do maintenance. Um, this extends will fit whatever depth you want and then these are quite good because they they clip onto your aquarium and force the hose so the hose clips for your aquarium basically 
so you don't have them all unruly going everywhere. Um, so you've got that as well. Two of them, one in, one out. And then the return for in your aquarium, you have these, so it's a dual return, and these move around so you can aim your return flow wherever you want it to go. Pretty standard on most fluvo filters, I think, these days. There is an optional spray bar, I don't have that. Um, so rather than this, you can have a spray bar attachment, but maybe that's something we'll test in the future. These are the clip on there, and then you attach your hose to this, so as if and if you're doing maintenance, you can literally close these valves. These I always found were extremely rough, um, but basically you can close the valves off, stop the water flow, oh, and they're still quite stiff. Ah, not too bad actually. So it basically locks them off, so no water's coming in or out. Turn the filter off first. And then you get a hose, one hose. I would have expected two, one for in, one for out. Am I expected to cut this? Let's consult the manual. All right, no, nope, that is intentional. So you'll see the hose has this on the end. This is the bit that connects to the bit that connects to the filter. So that fits on like that. Some Jubilee clamps are provided. You then cut it wherever you want it for the length. And then both the bits that are in the tank have a similar, but black, thankfully, uh, bit there, which you cut onto the, the bare end of the hose that you've just cut. So yeah, okay, makes sense. And then the last thing that we've not talked about is the clips and suction cups for, these are for the rim connectors. Somehow. Back to the manual has these bits here, which might be very hard to see, where you can attach some suction clips, suction cups just to keep it extra stable on the rim of your tank. Fair enough. The main selling point of this filter over other similar canister filters, even the Fluval range itself, so a 306, 406, that kind of thing, is this, it's the pump, it's the smart pump. The main benefit, as far as I was aware, was that it's self-priming, so none of this pumping handles to get it going again. Basically, just make sure that it's full of water and it goes away, but it also claims to be extra quiet and have technology in there which will manage your pump more efficiently and make sure the water is flowing most efficiently, which I guess is how they keep the power down. Something to be looked at in future reviews as to how well it does that, but that's what it says. On the bottom is an often looked Aha! I have found the reason why! So that little grommet was a foot that goes here because on the bottom of the filter you have these little rubber feet which aids with the anti-vibration, keeping things as quiet as possible. Which again, if you're buying this filter, you're buying it because it does claim to be quiet. So you want it as quiet as possible. So the manual has quite a comprehensive maintenance suggestion guide for when you should clean the various parts and how to clean the various parts. Um, how to disassemble the unit and replace the replaceable bits. So the pump is actually a replaceable bit. So if this was to die, you don't have to go and buy a new filter, you can just replace the pump itself. Basically just screws in and off. Um, but yeah, it's quite comprehensive and talks about all the things that you might want to do as part of your maintenance schedule and then more importantly how to do them. So I'm glad to see that there's a bit of user self-repair stuff here rather than just you know, send it away if it's broken or buy a new one. So that's good. That is it, generally. We've gone through everything that came with it. The material it's constructed with, it's obviously it's plastic, but it feels fairly sturdy. The, these are the pipes and things that you might think, oh, that's just going to snap off. They are pretty well in there. No movement, no worry about that. Um, everything seems in good order. These seem like the same contraptions that control the and tighten down the lid just with a different top. So we'll see how long these last out over time and if you want to follow along make sure you click that subscribe button to figure out what happens after six months or a year. Um, but yeah it's fairly sturdy, fairly user serviceable um, 
which is one of the main things I like about this. I have been a Fluval fanboy for a while, so I thought I was going to give this a positive review, and so far from what I've seen, fairly happy with it. I love the fact that it includes media. I might add more media to it, and how you set up your filter in terms of media layout is a video in and of itself, no doubt. But yeah, not going to go wrong with this. Very happy with it. So I just wanted to do a quick video of unboxing this and seeing what it came with and how it all hangs together and what it looks like. Hopefully that was of some use to you. If you click that subscribe button, the next video will be me adding this to the tank, but I want to give it a good few months of use before we give any final opinions on how good we think it is, but happy so far. Very sturdy, very strong, low power usage, all the things I care about. Hope that was of some use. If you want to join me on a Friday night, we can talk about these things in my live stream, 9 p.m. UK time, most Fridays. Um, you can ask me any questions or give me any specific tests that you want me to carry out on this filter. Um, otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.